Where can you find the best artifacts in Genshin Impact? When and how should you start farming them? I'm going to answer all of your questions into this video. Hey guys, this is Zoraz, not casuals. Today, I'm going to talk about artifact sets, specifically the late game artifacts, such as the one that I'm using on my Diluc, which is the Crimson Witch of Flames. Now, a lot of people come on the stream and on the videos asking, where do you get these artifacts? When should you farm them? How should you farm them? And so on. So today, I'm going to make a brief overview of all of these sets, where you can get them, and when you should start farming them realistically, and what you should not do when farming them. So you want to find the artifact sets that you need. The first thing you need to do is come on your map and click domains only down here. Now you will see that there are a few of these domains that give artifacts specifically and it says underneath. So there is one here, there is one here, one here, one here, and the last one is down here for a total of five. Now, if you look carefully, as you scroll down here, you will see that more set unlock as you get higher adventure ranks until you reach 45, where you will have the orange version of the item and it has the highest drop rate chance in the game. Now, if you look at these sets specifically, you will see that these are new sets that have certain bonuses and they are the late game sets of this game. You will see that they start dropping all the way up to adventure rank 30. The purple four star version starts dropping here, but you will not have access to the orange version until at least level 40, which is when you're going to have the best chance of farming and gearing you guys. Now, where are all the sets found? We'll go over them quickly. If you are looking for the Geo set, it is here. And if you are looking for the Shield set, it is down here. You will also find the purple version of the Bravery set, which doesn't have an orange version up here. Now, if we go to the next place here, you will find in this area, the Bloodstained Chivalry set, which is the physical damage set, as well as the Noblesse of Bleach set, which is an amazing, amazing support set. You will also find the Scholar set and the Gambler set in their purple version here, where they don't have a orange version. Next, in here, you will find the Crimson Witch of Flame set, which is the best pyro set in the game. And you will also find the Lava Walker set, which is the Fire Resistance set. You will also have the Martial Artist and the Defenders will in purple version here. Here, you will have the Maiden's Beloved set, which is the healing set, as well as you will find the Animal set up here. You will also have the Tiny Miracle set, which is an elemental resistance set, which can be useful for some characters. Now, lastly, if we come to the Midsummer Courtyard, you will see that this has the Electro Damage set, as well as the Electro Resistance set, and it also has the Sojourner set as its purple four-star set. Now, if you're looking for the Gladiator set or the Wanderer's Troop set, they are found in all the world bosses around the map. You will see that they have the chance of dropping the Gladiator Finale and the Wanderer's Troop, which is the orange version of these sets, and these are two of the best sets in the game. You also have a few other sets in the purple version that will be dropping from these world bosses. You will see that no matter where you look, they all kind of have the same loot table, with their main loot being the Ascension Material for their element. You'll also notice that the bosses such as Lupus will also have these sets and also offer some prototype for weapons to be craftable for four star weapons. The same thing is true here. If we go to Storm Terror, he has basically the exact same loot table. And as you go down an adventure rank, you will see that obviously the orange items will be getting higher and higher chances of dropping and better and better. Now you will notice that there isn't a set for every single element, but the game will definitely be adding more of these in the future and in the new zones where you will probably find the sets that you're looking for such as the water set for example now it is very important that when you are doing this you do not start farming these until later on in the game now these unlock at level 30 when you're adventuring 30 you will first get access to these where it starts dropping the electro damage shed and the fire damage shed and all that stuff in the purple version now, it is very recommended that you wait until at least AR-35 before you start farming them because the drop rate of these sets in the 30 version is quite low. You will get a lot of blue item and sometimes you will get one purple item if you're lucky, which means that you'll be spending a lot of resin, 20 resin every time, and you'll be getting mostly blue items. If you start doing an adventure rank 35, you will be getting a lot of purple item, almost guaranteed one every time, sometimes even two in each run so this is my biggest tip here do not start farming too many artifact sets before you reach advanced rank 35 
and the longer you can wait the better it is because the orange set is the best version currently available in the game now i want to highlight the fact that you should be spending 100 percent of your resin in the early game until you reach ar35 on anything but artifacts you'll be getting plenty of artifacts through the game with chest quest abyss and many other places and you should not start farming your resin into artifact until adventure rank 35 because otherwise it will be wasted on a lot of blue items you should be going around the map and farming all the ascension materials that you can through world bosses which will also give you a chance of getting some good artifacts or if you just simply go to ascension material places domain you will find a lot of these you will be needing dozens and dozens of these items to upgrade your gear when you're later in the game so you will regret not spending your resin early game on this stuff and wasting it on blue artifacts so you should be really really focusing your resin on level up materials for talents ascension material for uh, weapons and the other ascension materials that you will be needing for your characters it is good that you plan your resin completely reserved for this purpose until at least ar35 if you want to be the most efficient possible once you reach AR-35, it will be a good thing to start looking at which sets you want and which character you want to gear. Now, we have character guides on a lot of our characters right now, so we are going to be recommending which set goes with which character. Now, there's so many ways to build different characters. You can build them as support, DPS, support DPS. There's so many different sets that will work for the same character. So try and find out who your main characters are and try and farm these sets specifically while also trying to get secondary set that will work for your other characters while doing so. Now, the other source of the late game artifacts will be through your adventure book. Now, you can see that at chapter seven, I'm getting a few of these uh, four star artifacts. And once you read chapter eight, nine and ten, you will have orange items. So five star artifacts that will be rewarded from both this kind of stuff here where you get some of these bonuses and it will also be rewarded from the complete reward here. Lastly, if we go in this parallel abyss reward here, you will see that as you progress later and later with the chambers that you clear, some of them will be giving you these items. Now you can go in your inventory and open these items for four star and eventually some five star artifacts through this method. So this is going to be the basic ways that you're going to be unlocking your artifacts. Now, when you're unlocking artifacts, of course, there is a few things to look at. It is going to be hard to create a perfect set. For example, when I'm on Diluc, I'm trying to get a set that has a lot of attack, but at the same time, I want to have the four set bonus. So you're going to be trying to go for the main stat here to be the stat that you want for your character. And then you're going to try and make it to the secondary stat is also the stats that you want. For example, while this Witch Ends Time is a great item because it has attack and it is my set bonus, the two secondary roles here are completely useless for Diluc. So I would try and farm more and more of this item in order to get better roles. And the same will happen when you upgrade these items. You will try and every four level get a new stat and you will hope that it is something that you need. Now, it will take a very long time to create the perfect item. And I do not recommend you try it with purple item. You should wait until you're at the orange tier five star items before you really try and min max the secondary attributes. Until then, you really try and focus that the main stat is what you want and that it gives you the set bonus that you want. And you will get very far in the game with simply doing that. Now, just to conclude, of course, there are many ways to get a lot of these really good late game artifacts. You will find them through chests, you will find them through quests, you'll find them through a lot of other ways. And you should not really be focusing on farming the best artifacts in the game until you're really later into the stages and you're trying to push the abyss really far and create a perfect team. Until then, try and just have fun. Use artifacts that have the stats that you want. Usually offensive stats work best at the beginning of the game. And then later on, you'll try and make builds around elemental mastery, critical, and all that kind of stuff. Remember that there is no better set and better hero than others in most situations. As long as you have a, ta a balanced team comp and that you're playing characters that you enjoy the gameplay of, you'll be able to create teams in the Abyss that will work very well. Lastly, I want to remind everyone that once you are doing the Abyss, if you reach floor five and higher, you will need to bring two teams of four characters in every level afterwards. That means that you will have to have eight geared and well-equipped and leveled characters in order to do late levels of the Abyss, which means that you will have to farm a lot of different sets. So it is really important that you really focus on one thing at a time and you don't get ahead of yourself and waste resin on that. I hope this video was useful to you guys. If you enjoyed this kind of content, please leave a like and subscribe because we upload these videos every single day. 
We love to have your comments and your suggestions. If you want to join our Discord or let us know in the comments what kind of video you would like to see next, we're happy to make guides for you guys. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you on the next video.